Spring is right around the corner and it's time to get that old cooler out. But this one has seen better days. In fact, it's pretty rugged. But we're going to fix it up and get ready for those barbecues and all the guests. First thing, we got to get the hinges off the back. Pretty simple with these ones. They just have screws that take them out. Otherwise, you have to cut them. Here's the thing, though. You probably think we need a tape measure for this build. Not today. We can do this whole thing without the tape measure. So there it goes. Let's get that lid off. We're going to set it aside, but we're going to need it later. And let's grab some fence pickets. Six foot cedar is what we need for this project. Now take a piece of scrap wood, place it on the handle and take your first fence picket. We're going to mark underneath. That is going to give our height that we need. We can cut two at a time if we need to. We need to cut a total of eight of these. Eight will give us four legs because we're going to put two together. Now the secret to this whole project is glue, lots of wood glue. That's what it's going to hold it together while we staple it in place. Take two of your fence pickets, line them up, and we're going to go ahead and staple or nail or screw these in place. I happen to have a nailer, so it works perfect. Go ahead and go all the way down and make four pairs. Take two of those pairs and we're going to put them on the short end of the cooler. Once you get those lined up, make sure you make room for the handle. Then we're going to take our next scrap piece of wood and we're going to mark it out so we can join these legs together. Again, you can cut two at a time with any type of saw that you need. And here we are with the glue again. This glue is going to be strong. It's what holds it together and keeps the boards from warping. Line them up, two pairs of legs at a time. Use tiny little nails or staples and hold them together until the glue dries. Once that glue dries, I promise you it's going to be strong. Now, set up your pair of legs right there. Make sure it fits. If it does, let's put another board on. That way we can cover up the whole cooler. Also, let's go down towards the bottom. Make sure we put some there too. That's going to give it some support. Now it's time for the long side. We're going to put a board on the outside and cut it to fit. And we need two of them just like the other side. Once we got those on, it's time to build the bottom. I turned the igloo over, put the cooler stand back up on its back, and screwed it into place instead of the staples. There's going to be a little bit of weight in that cooler, and we're going to make it super strong. Drop that cooler right into your project. It's looking good. Now we're going to put some sides on, a little bit of trim board. It's going to make it look really good. I had some scraps left over. Again, use the glue and the staples to put it together. Now it's time for the lid. We want the wood to be the exact same height as the lid of the igloo container. That way it goes on just nice. And I got lucky. I had some old pallet wood that I could mix and match with the cedar. I think it gave it some nice look to it. Kind of mix it up a little bit. Once we get it on, glue and staples all the way around the edges. That's going to make this lid super strong. Now, take the lid off, both of them. And what we need to do is we need to take the lid and put it upside down because we need to fasten it to our new wood lid. Take some regular old wood screws, make sure they're not too long, and go ahead and screw them on. Then you're going to put it back in place, grab two small door hinges or cabinet hinges, and put those on. They're easy to do, no need for a pilot hole, just drill them back on. And guess what? I don't want to go ahead and use a regular handle. I've got some scrap wood. Let's make us a rustic handle to lift the lid. It's real simple. Using that glue and those nails, put them right on. It's going to look great. Can't forget, we need a bottle opener. Go ahead and put one of those on. Now it's time to drop the cooler in, get some ice and your favorite beverages. Look at that. This thing just looks absolutely amazing. And I made a little lid catcher because I had to catch those lids straight from the bottle. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed making it, and I hope it inspired you to build your own DIY rustic wood cooler. Transform an ordinary styrofoam cooler into a dual purpose ottoman. I used the largest styrofoam cooler I could find. Lay out your fabric and cut it down pretty close to the size of the lid. Add spray adhesive to the fabric, then press the lid into place. I found it worked best to spray the adhesive directly onto the fabric instead of onto the styrofoam. Fold up on the sides, then work on the corners. Since I didn't have an extra set of hands, I used straight pens to help me hold the fabric in place 
while I was folding and gluing. Create neat corners by pulling the points in first, then folding in each side. Now it's time for the base. Start with a large section of the fabric that's been cut down so it's only slightly bigger than needed. Spray on the adhesive, then work your way from one side to the bottom, then to the other side of the cooler. You'll do your sides and corners just like you did your lid. Have patience here and use those straight pins to help you hold the fabric in place while you're gluing. While you're working, cut away as much of the excess fabric as you can. Try to keep the fabric as neat as possible. A printed fabric would have been much more forgiving. Since your new ottoman started as a cooler, it can now serve two purposes. Keep your drinks cold with your new footrest. I hope this video inspires you to create your own custom cooler. This is a great dresser, right? But what good is a dresser if you have no use for it? I used two of the drawers for another project and then decided to make something useful with the rest of the dresser. I removed the top drawer runner by cutting it with a handsaw. Then I knocked the side pieces out with a hammer. The dresser was old and had some missing wood, which I filled with wood putty. I sanded the entire piece with fine grit sandpaper. and I wiped everything down with a damp cloth to remove the dust. The dresser sat too low, so I wanted to add legs. Using a leg top plate, I measured and cut pieces of one by four inch pine to size. I screwed the leg top plate to the pine, making sure that it was centered. I nailed those pieces in place, then screwed in the new legs, which were purchased at Lowe's. I used early American stain for the inside back of the dresser. The outside I painted with Valspar chalk paint. I did leave some of the wood unpainted and those spots were stained. I wanted to add a shelf so I measured the inside and cut a three quarter inch piece of plywood to size. I wanted the shelf to sit flush so I measured and cut out the notches. Once the shelf was sanded and painted, I applied wood glue to the bottom shelf runner and set the pieces in place. One piece of plywood wouldn't fit inside, so I cut the piece into two. I nailed it in place, and then I applied wood putty to the center seam. I replaced the trim that I had cut off and then put in the lower drawer. And now I have a brand new bar, a useful piece of furniture. With a coat of wax and new knobs, this bar is ready for a party. I hope this inspires you to rethink throwing away furniture that you no longer use.